morning, everyone. This is uh, Michael Robbins substituting for Tuya Robbins, and we are broadcasting from the uh, Little Bear Meditation Center north of the Arctic Circle, where the energy is very special, I would say. It's already getting cold up here, and uh, we see the signs of the uh, full autumn setting in, and it lasts a very short time. This is a wintry type of land, and the at a certain point the sun will not rise here, but that gives a very special kind of spiritual uh, atmosphere. This is uh, our Ask Project. Uh, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. It's a project concerning the uh, art and science of invocation, one of the major sciences of the coming new age. We human beings have to learn how to uh, ask in a spiritual way, uh, demand the uh, downflow of the uh, spiritual energies at certain selected times so they can reach humanity and transform its consciousness and consequently transform uh, its activity. In the ASK program, as you probably know, we work with uh, triangles. The triangles work on Wednesday, the reappearance of the Christ on Thursday. We have a webinar on Friday uh, for the dissipation of glamour. We call it the Dissipation of Glamour Initiative. And we're working with um, the very difficult glamours of hatred and separativeness, which are rampant in the world today. And we'll be doing more work on individual glamour shortly. Then on Saturday, we have our Invocation of the Souls of Nations. Right now, we're doing uh, a bit of a substitute program for that. We're talking about your own particular nation, both from its... Uh, soul and personality perspective and from your point of view and how you can cooperate with it. And then on Sundays we have the attracting money for hierarchical purposes, something which is uh, very, very important. Now, you know, Master DK has told us how important it is to think in terms of the energies of the nations, just the way we think in terms of the energies of any individual. If we want to know the role which a nation is to play in the comity of nations, we have to know the energies which condition it. Now, not all of those have been given uh, yet by Master DK, but for some of the uh, more prominent or larger uh, countries in population, uh, the uh, ray energies and astrological energies have been given. Eventually, all uh, the nations uh, which have somewhat established themselves, I would say, and are not in the very, very beginning uh, phases of their expression, Event eventually uh, rays and astrological signs will be given for all of them. Often uh, DK will give the astrological signs, which perhaps are of somewhat lesser importance, before he gives the ray, uh, the ray energies. So we have to think uh, in terms of the nations uh, psychologically and to see what kind of contribution they can make uh, to each other uh, in harmony, just the way cooperative human beings can work together according to their ray energies in uh, harmony. And also we have to see the trouble that may arise when uh, the personality energy alone is followed. Now, the personality energy is the more material energy. It is a separative uh, energy, and it emphasizes individualism. Uh, this is a necessary phase for any individual and can last a long time, and it is certainly, uh, as well, a necessary phase for the various nations. They cannot jump into soul expression before they have expressed their their idealism and their somewhat self-centered mind and their 
sense of being uh, unique and centered upon themselves. This is a necessary phase. But in the uh, world as it stands today, if too many nations are simply functioning as personalities, and especially the nations which have uh, great power and weaponry uh, and uh, considerable armies and uh, technology and those kinds of forces, it presents a very uh, dangerous situation. So our goal is to help uh, all nations eventually, and certainly now the prominent uh, nations of the world express more and more according to uh, more and more according to their soul nature. Now this is not easy. Uh, the major thing that has to happen there is that the people and the groups within those nations have also to begin to express their soul nature. And as we all know uh, from our studies of esotericism, this takes a lot of training. Well, uh, this is not to say that everybody has to turn into a student of esotericism or occultism, but the principle of goodwill, which is love in action, uh, is, uh, can be spread abroad, and that is the idea behind uh, Master DK's uh, fostering of a group like uh, World Goodwill, to spread goodwill throughout the world and throughout the many nations. It's easy enough to understand, and easy enough to express and and to help do this via the triangles network the triangles network uh, is something very close to master dk's heart he has said and i i think he's given us some occult hints when he has uh, said that that it is close to my heart and it is a work that must go on so love goodwill and uh, spiritual light have to be spread abroad in the nations before their uh, their connection with their own causal body can be sufficient to draw in uh, what we would call soul expression. Right now in so many nations we see uh, a warfare going on between the best uh, in the nation and some of the less uh, desirable traits. So um, that's what we're really concentrating on now. We're It's a simple thing we're doing. Last week we we thought about our own nation, whatever that might be. And, you know, you're in a position, probably, in your nation to know it better than the nationals of other nations. Uh, we thought about the soul expression and the good qualities, the qualities that lead to human cooperation and harmony and <clears throat> progress for the members of that nation and for the members of all uh, humanity. Now, today very simple, we're going to think about the personality uh, expression. Now, you know, I could give a few examples, you know, since I'm a citizen of the United States, um, I could say, well, the soul ray is the second, it's the loving, understanding, inclusive uh, ray of love, wisdom, and that is the general humanitarian intent of the nation along the Aquarian line once those energies established. But the uh, personality ray of the United States is the militant uh, sixth ray of idealism and sometimes uh, uh, irrational and uncontrolled uh, idealism, which emphasizes only its point of view. You know, for instance, like, let's say, trying to impose uh, democracy on uh, all the nations of the world when that may not be their way and they may not be ready for it, that quality of uh, idealistic imposition. And, you know, along with its Gemini uh, uh, personality sign, we have the possibility of idealistic polarization. The different ideals uh, on, on different sides fighting with each other intensely and not seeing each other's point of view and a very great cleavage resulting. Well, I think you see this in the United States. We have the election coming up and we have had for a number of years the red states and the blue states. Uh, the blue states corresponding more with uh, Jupiter and the second ray soul perhaps, though, you know, not, not, not entirely. And the red states corresponding more with Mars and the militant idealism of the sixth ray. So it's a very unresolved situation, and it is a problem. I mean, for those of you who are 
uh, in the United States, when you think of the personality of that great country, you can think of the sixth ray and also the polarizing sign Gemini before it manages to have a reasonable um, kind of interplay between the poles. Uh, you know, if you were from Britain, let's say the United Kingdom, well then Taurus would be the personality side, and the first ray, um, the first ray would be the personality ray, and this co uh, contrasts very greatly with uh, Gemini as the soul sign and the second ray of love wisdom as the soul ray. You know, DK has talked about the um, intractable, uh, impositional kind of. Uh, John Bull attitude of the uh, personality of the United Kingdom. Well, maybe that has changed somewhat, I suppose, since the Second World War, but it leads to a certain uh, materialism, a certain inflexibility, uh, a, a certain tendency to impose the law as it is understood in that kingdom. And, uh, you know, a resistance against change. It has good qualities, of course, because any uh, personality ray, just as for a human being, uh, can be used as a subray of the soul. Or maybe uh, you would go to uh, Russia and you would find there that its uh, uh, personality ray is the sixth and that its um, a personality sign is Leo. Well, there's, there's a certain tendency towards imperialism, idealistic imperialism in that particular combination. Its Aquarian seventh ray soul uh, has not, of course, fully manifested, just as none of the combinations of soul and personality, uh, excuse me, soul, rays, and signs have fully manifested in any country. But, you know, it's possible to run, ar run away with one's own ideals and then to impose them in an imperialistic manner upon others. And we saw this with the Soviet Union. So a certain kind of idealistic pride in one's own uh, presentation of truth. And we could go on with the more prominent nations uh, in, in terms of population, and we could look at their combination of personality ray and personality sign. Well, maybe you know those, or maybe not, uh, and a, a good reading of the destiny of the nations would help uh, in that respect, but not all information is there and the situation is greatly evolving all the time. There are so many more nations in the world now, fledgling nations, than existed when Master Decay was writing this book in the uh, after, you know, largely after uh, World War II. So the situation has changed greatly and, and no doubt when he begins to write again uh, in the uh, in and perhaps following um, well, let's just say uh, definitely following the year 2025, and who knows, maybe even beginning in the year 2025, maybe we will have uh, another broad consideration of the uh, interrelations between nations and cultures and religions and so forth. It's very important to take this larger point of view. So what we'll be asking here is for you to just simply think about your nation and uh, think of it from the personality perspective, just as you would think about a human being from uh, its personality perspective, and see what might be the advantages eventually when that personality ray becomes the uh, sub-ray of the soul ray, or a personality sign becomes a, a sub-sign of the soul sign. Think of it uh, in, in that way, but if you don't know the technical energies, it's not so important. Just think about the qualities of your nation with which you are familiar from the personality perspective. And when we meet again next week, we'll try to put these two together and look at the interaction between them and see what steps might have to be taken by individuals and groups and uh, state governments and uh, regional governments in order to bring uh, the personality tendencies of the country under the sway of the soul impulsions, the soul tendencies. As I said, you know, the triangles are really, really important in all of this because if we want to help to uh, improve the consciousness of any group, 
we want to work with the uh, light with the love and with the spiritual will which can be circulated through the triangles of any nation and internationally as so many people are forming international triangles all of this of course is done in the name of the of the great lord of the hierarchy of the christ who is the uh, he's the head of the hierarchy but you know in so many ways he seems to be the heart of the hierarchy as well and when we work with him you know we we remember uh, that we work in his name and it has been said that whatsoever shall be asked in his name and with faith in the response shall see it accomplished but of course we can't ask for something selfish in his name obviously because he is the Lord of uh, well in, in terms of comparison with most human beings the Lord of complete unselfishness so what we think together that we have gathered in your name Lord Maitreya be with us our tendencies have to be for the welfare of the larger group and as Master Moria has said who's ever for the common welfare or the common wheel W-E-A-L is with us and you know when you when you think about your nation remember that it is under the sway of one of the great five planetary centers either London Geneva New York uh, Tokyo or Darjeeling each one of them having their own uh, rays in terms of a planetary expression and uh, each city having its own particular rays which may correspond or not to the planetary function of the center. Probably for most of us in the Alice Bailey work, not all of course, the, um, the centers of uh, New York, uh, London and Geneva are the most prominent because you know as many English speaking people that that is where we live but of course the work is international and uh, let's just say uh, as we see here that New York works for the entire a Western Hemisphere, uh, you know, includes uh, North and South uh, America and, uh, and and Central America, and that uh, Geneva is working for all of Europe and uh, the uh, the well, it used to be called the USSR, but uh, those countries which were part of the USSR and uh, are within the uh, well, let's call it the Russian sphere of influence, and then London for the. Um, for the countries that used to be part of the uh, British Empire. It's less of an empire now, it's more of a leading force, but that would include, you know, uh, among others, uh, Canada and uh, New Zealand and uh, Australia, uh, no longer India in the same sense. It's not part of the British Empire anymore. So those, those three um, planetary centers are very, very important, and sometime we can look at uh, what function they might play but largely the pure second ray force is coming through Geneva and uh, the idealistic uh, six ray force through New York and uh, the constructive uh, first ray force through London eventually uh, Tokyo will be brought out of its uh, materialistic tendencies it's got a ray one emphasis planetarily and uh, Darjeeling uh, will convey the pure first ray force that operates for uh, India and the greater part of Asia. But keep that in mind when you're thinking about the sphere of influence in which your country may be found because this is an over uh, arching or an overlaying influence from the five planetary centers and I suppose you know we're in the fifth root race now and there, w there are five but eventually there will be six and then seven planetary centers as other continents awaken spiritually uh, in relation to the coming root races. So there's a picture of uh, these five planetary centers and uh, you can uh, imagine the envelope, the spiritual envelope in which you are working as you attempt to uh, do your little part to bring your nation into uh, uh, adjustment with its own uh, soul tendencies and thus with the divine plan and with the
purpose of the Lord of the world. So let us now uh, have a few moments of meditation with uh, that uh, the background uh, in mind. We are just little people, you know, we are emanations of the one, and we have a tiny sphere of influence, really. But uh, if enough of us uh, spiritualize our lives, and live up to the best in ourselves and help our groups live up to the best that is within them, it will have this ongoing effect to spiritualize our nation. And uh, then uh, it will be possible to bring the causal body of our uh, nation into such a condition, such a condition of uh, relative unfoldment that a new esoteric school can appear within um, these uh, such a nation and disseminate uh, the ageless wisdom and the kind of thought forms, the kind of vision so needed to guide uh, humanity along the right track and first of all guide our own nation along the right track. So let us realize that we do have a national responsibility uh, leading to a global responsibility. I think that saying associated with the United Nations that we must uh, think globally and act locally. Well, our local action is uh, community-wise and also in terms of our nation. So uh, let us think uh, in terms of what is the contribution of our nation and what are the impediments uh, to that contribution. So we'll link up with each other However, many of us uh, that are here or may be listening to this later, and in the many nations that we represent, we come together in the state of uh, the soul. We come together in cooperation. come together in harmony, and in unselfishness, not seeking the advancement of our nation over others. There have been, as you know, national anthems where the excellence of one country is said to dominate all others. That's not what we're looking for. So we're in the state of soul with each other and we're not limited by time, we're not limited by the spatial location of our nation, it's an energy situation we're in. And last week we thought about the good of our nation, maybe just um, say to yourself one, two or three particular qualities which your nation is expressing, in process of expressing, and in process of sharing with other nations. certainly cannot be fully uh, expressing yet, but um, they're on their way, and they're part of that quality of contribution, the general composite quality of contribution, which your nation will offer. But now, think about the more individual 
outside of your nation, the part that is rather more centered on itself, concerned with its own issues and not very concerned with the impact that these ways may have upon others. This would be the the aspects of the personality and especially the unredeemed aspects. There are probably personality aspects of our nations which are already somewhat in line with the greater good. But there are also issues in our nations which cause some degree of friction, trouble, work against the harmony and cooperation of nations. I guess every nation, like every person, has such energy expressions. So think about the general quality of the personality of your nation. We'll take some time to do this. We may not know the ray. We may not know the sign, although, you know, every nation has some sign associated with it according to the moment of its founding. But that personality ray does change. And that's what we have to think about, just like it does for a human being, although the soul ray tends to remain the same. But anyway, what are the personal qualities of your nation as you see and understand them at this time dwell on them try to be clear about them and see whether they are uh, in the way of the general uh, global uh, cooperation or whether they are somehow helping it so we'll take some silent time to do that
course you can you know do research you can ponder you can think about the personal qualities, the uh, more material, more self-centered qualities of your nation. No, no nation has overcome this. Some nations are learning to be disciples now, but we know that disciples have their struggles too with the personal nature, and there is no uh, truly uh, third-degree initiate nation. There may be some have thought that there might be first-degree initiate nations, but that would be full of struggle, too. And has any um, nation really overcome the desire of nature in such a way that it can be called a second-degree initiate nation? I think these are things for the future. The idea here expressed in this um, illustration is if the Christ... Uh, quality during the next 2,500 years manages to permeate the consciousness of humanity, we will have an entirely different uh, interrelation between the nations and their the soul energy within them will rise and the personal energy which is often so obstructive, e even using the soul energies for personal purposes then uh, there will be that kind of improvement, a kind of improvement which will see the soul energies expressed far more in the spirit of the Christ. So now what we will do, uh, we will think of how the great mantra, the great invocation, the invocation for light and power uh, can transform the world, and it's our greatest instrument for facilitating the reappearance of the Christ, and even once he's here visible among us, the Christ spirit can still be invoked, because it will not happen overnight, that the great change will come in the way people are living their lives. So we will now listen together and uh, to the great invocation and give our uh, assent to the words which if used with soul, with true intensity of loving feeling can make such a difference.
So friends, we will see you tomorrow for our attracting money for hierarchical purposes uh, broadcast. And next week we will um, resume and look at the interplay between the soul and personality of your particular nation. So, until then, and let us stay in alignment as we try to change the world spiritually.